What's up, Infected, and welcome to Kickstart Your Week. Now, if you're not familiar with what this is, this show is, this is my weekly segment that I put up every week, and I cover the previous week's Kickstarter games that I thought looked interesting. Now, the way I go about doing this is just the ones that stand out to me. I just kind of briefly look over it. I, I you know, does it kind of overall look cool at a glance, and that's kind of what I base my criteria off of. And now with so many Kickstarter projects in so little time, uh, I narrow it down to a, at most 10. So, because there's no way I'm going to be able to cover every single Kickstarter project. Now, first up is Land of Lords. Now, this one looks like a strategy game that's kind of like Risk, but with varying units. And the, the units that you place out on the field go face down with your faction's color and symbol on the back. And then you can hire, like, mercenaries... And so there's all, the, and there's all this hidden movement information to where, you know, you don't know what this giant unit is, you know, these four or five units that are marching towards, like, your king. You don't know what they are. And then we wind up flipping them over and resolve combat. Now, that's one thing I didn't really notice is there's no dice at all in the game from what I can tell. I looked at, over the components, there's no dice, which, awesome. But it didn't really explain how combat works. So... Kind of a little iffy there, but overall, I mean, that looks pretty cool. Next up is Final Boss. Now, Final Boss is a similar but legally distinct Tron-themed game, from what I can tell. And it's got a lot of pop culture and video game references scattered throughout the game. And it seems like it's a, a take that, but also have to kill a Final Boss uh, style game. And I'm kind of what I'm guessing is it's got like a, a little bit that I could gather. It's got like a cutthroat caverns kind of feel to it where only one person's going to get the credit for actually killing it. So you want to screw over your friends so you get that final kill. And that's kind of what I got from it. Uh, the artwork looks real retro and pretty nice. Uh, to be honest. And overall, I mean, it looks like it might be an interesting game. Um, but like I said, I already have Cutthroat Caverns, but either way, you know, it looks interesting. Now, number three, I'm probably going to get yelled at by the way I pronounce that, but it's Sakura or Sakura. Uh, it is, this one's a hand elimination game, but with a few twists. So you have a yin-yang in the middle of the table, and you have the yin on one side and the yang on the other, and you have to play cards, you have to play two cards around, one in yin and one in yang, and the what, when you play on one side has to be higher than the previous card, and on the other side has to be lower than the previous card. And so you have to do that. But then if you can't play a card, you can spend money to hire mercenaries, which give you a special ability, like maybe you can now flip the yin-yang, or, you know, a couple other different ones. I, it, that's really the only one I've explained. But uh, there's like five different abilities that you can spend. And if you can't play cards, you have to pick up that whole stack. And I thought that was a really cool concept. And the artwork on it is minimalistic. It's really nice. It's very Japanese. Um, overall, it, it looked like it'll be an incredibly fun little pocket-sized game. I couldn't imagine it being anything larger than like this. So it... it Definitely check this one out. Now, number four is Container, the 10th anniversary. Now, this one is an economic game where you're, fr you're, you're these giant, uh, like, ocean lining cargo freighters. Uh, the ones that your board games uh, from Kickstarter actually come to the U.S. or usually wherever you're at. <laughs> That's how they're shipped. And you're playing as one of those freighting companies. Um... And it's got some new, uh, a new investment uh, add-on, I guess, that is, I don't know if it's an add-on or if it's just included or what, uh, but to be honest, the ship is like six inches long. So you're looking at what, like this is how big each of the freighters are, and then each one of the containers that go onto it are like an inch and a half wide. So you're, the, the models alone look really impressive and would... I almost want to back it just for those minis alone, but then when you tack onto an economic simulator game, I, I'll i definitely need to check what the previous edition is, but this one looks awesome, and again, the minis alone almost look worth it. Next up, number five, is Numerasi Legends. I think I pronounced that one right. Now, this one looks like it's a cute little uh, game about math and logic and pre-planning, all wrapped up into this adventure Candyland style game uh, with a little bit of mix of you know probability in there, and it's meant for younger kids. 
multiple ages. I think it says like four to ten is recommended. For and and I love this concept because you know, my daughter, for example, she's ten years old, and I wish I had something like this that was fun for the adults to play, but that the you know that my daughter was able to kind of learn probability and pre planning and um, what is it the a uh, little bit of math. All in this awesome little adventure, but no, I was stuck playing Candyland and Pretty Pretty Princess. So this one, if you have kids, I cannot recommend checking this one out enough. Now number six is Ninjutsu. Now I've already reviewed this one. If you haven't seen that review, I definitely recommend checking it out. Uh, but this one is a game about hidden information and a lot of bluffing where you're trying to collect up to 21 points of gold without it being stolen. And then people can steal it and... You can lie about what you have down, and a lot of bluffing, and a lot of hidden information. It's a good, fun little game. I definitely recommend checking out that review as well. Number seven is Cauldron, Boil, Bubble and Boil. Now, this one, you're a witch or a warlock, and you're trying to brew the best potion in your coven, so that way you become the coven leader. And in order to brew those potions and get the ingredients, you have to grow them, which takes a lot of time and resources. Or you can use hexes and steal them from other people who have already grown them. Uh, but apparently, it doesn't really go into detail uh, from what I could tell, but there's downsides from actually casting those hexes that affect you in, later on in the long run. So you kind of have to weigh that, you know, waste a lot of time growing all these things and stealing it from everybody else and having to deal with those negative repercussions. Now number eight is Gameception, which this is a comment and a joke that I use for pretty much anything. Anytime I read a book about somebody reading a book or I watch a TV and somebody's watching a TV in the TV show, and it's a TV-ception or movie-ception or a game-ception or, you know. So that's basically the concept of this game is before, when your game night starts, you guys will break out Gameception, you'll all draw some cards, and then you maybe decide whoever wins gets uh, to either pick the next game, or maybe whoever has the lowest points takes a shot, or, or whatever. You, you Some kind of grounds of what's going to happen. And then you play that game, but you also have these Gameception cards as well. And some of them are like if somebody sneezes, or if somebody mentions Kickstarter at all, or if somebody checks uh, plays around on their phone, or if somebody says... Men, they've been working hard, or just little phrases, or if they do something, or if somebody stretches with their arms up, or anything like that. Then you can go, all right, and you drop your card, and like, I scored this one. And I just thought that was pretty cool, because I, I like game, like, I, I like outside of game games. They don't, they don't force you, it's not forcing you to be silly, it's not forcing you to do anything, but it's making you pay attention to everything around that's going on, and I want to play something like this with Battlestar Galactica where you're already paranoid as hell about everybody, and then you tack in Gameception to it. I, I just thought that was an awesome premise. Uh, it may be a little bit silly, maybe I'm the only one, uh, but Gameception. And number nine is Song of Fire and Ice from Cool Many or Not. Now, I love Game of Thrones. I've never read the books. I don't have the time. Full-time job, family, daughter, YouTube channel, whole nine yards. I just, I don't have the time to read the books. So the elitists out there that, no, you're not a true fan, I could care less. Uh, but I love the HBO show. And this one, I looked over it a couple times, so I didn't know if I wanted to include it, include it on this list because it looked like uh, just a minis game, like a tabletop miniatures game. And I don't really like to include those on these, even though I'm a big fan. But this one looks a little bit different. Not really different, but kind of different. Same sense. But you, so you have these blocks of formations, and you're going to wheel them around and give your orders out, and you clash into each other, you roll dice, you know, damage is done, morale is checked, they break and run away, you chase them down, stuff like that. And then you have commanders that give special abilities. And so overall, it looks like Warhammer Fantasy meets um, the Total War video games. And I love the Total War video games. And I thought that looked phenomenal because you mix the Game of Thrones into it and it's actually based on the book description, all the characters. So, you know, Catelyn, you know, Catelyn Stark and or Tyrion Lannister, for example, um, looks like he's supposed to look in the book. So overall, I thought the A Song of Fire and Ice looked fantastic. 
And that's why I went ahead and, and included it into this list. All right, that is my games for this week. Uh, I only chose nine this week because they're the only ones that really jumped out at me. Uh, but if you like any of these, definitely check them down in the description. Uh, I'm also in a podcast with the Gamerati. I will actually have a link to that down in the description as well. They do a podcast also just kind of BSing about board games uh, or Kickstarter board games and stuff. And I'm going to regularly, hopefully regularly, be on that. So if you want to check them out, I'll have a link to that down in the description as well. Uh, they're pretty cool guys. I've talked to them quite a bit. Anyways, I hope you enjoy my channel. If you like it and would like to support it, definitely check out my Patreon up here in the corner and down in the description. If you're afraid of commitment, I definitely understand. I have a tip jar down there as well if you'd like to just do a one-time donation. If you're new here, make sure you click that subscribe button, give my video a like, and I'll see you guys next time in the quarantine.